If the old political adage is true, it's the economy, stupid. That's the 2020 election season campaign. Certainly that should be the campaign note from President Trump, uh, because if right now it doesn't look like he has a lot to worry about. The new, the new Washington Post poll out showing his approval rating rising. It's five points higher than it was in April, the highest of his presidency, and more than half of those in the country approve of his handling of the economy. For more on this, I want to bring in former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci to Mooch. What's up, man? It's great to be here. Yeah, was, it's great was, to have you. Listen. I was digging the tunes before the show started. <laughs> yeah, we always rock the tunes. Fortunately, it's my era. You know, that's the thing. But Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a golden era, but this is also a golden era as well. The president's doing great. I mean, look, I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to be a what and how test in, in the election. What the president's doing, absolutely staggering, literally creating an economic miracle in the United States and globally. And that will be something that will be studied by academics about how to deregulate a society, put the right incentives on the table for tax cuts, tighten up the immigration so that you can increase the uh, labor market for lower and middle income people in terms of their wages. All those things are great. Now, the, the issue with the president is how he's doing it and some of the bellicosity of his rhetoric. But, um, you know, well, I, I predict the, the that those approval part. numbers. What's, what's wrong with the way how he's doing it? Or is that a problem? How he's doing it? Well, yeah. I think what happens sometimes, his use of Twitter is off-putting to some of the voters that he needs. So, you know, when you're calling Rex Tillerson dumb as a rock on Twitter, it may feel good in the moment. So he's going to lose all five it, Rex Tillerson voters. No, I'm just no, being no, a little no, facetious no, I think, here. No, I think white women voters who are trying to teach their kids about anti-bullying don't like it. Well, Trump's. all these things that you're talking about, though, if President Trump didn't use Twitter, how would the average person even know about it? Because let's be honest, the mainstream media no, never, think, never I, gives him credit. I, I think, and I've said this since 2016, he has to use Twitter. I'm just talking about the strategic uses of Twitter. I mean, there's good Twitter, and there's good President Trump on Twitter, and you and I both know there's bad President Trump on Twitter. But that notwithstanding, he's going to win re-election. He's got uh, a very, very good uh, tailwind behind the economy. You'll likely see a rate cut. You and I debated that uh, yesterday. Uh, and so all of these things are very good for him. And you've got 17 months to go. Uh, you're not going to see a recession in 17 months in the United States, and it's very, very hard to dislodge an incumbent during that period. That's the key, isn't it? I think the only thing that can derail President Trump would be a recession. Uh, and I think, you know, and I want to segue this, use this to segue into the Federal Reserve. President Trump continues to pound on, on Jay, Jay Powell. I think there, it's a two-pronged approach. This is my theory. Obviously, he wants rates lower. He thinks that Powell made a mistake, particularly with that December rate hike. But secondly, by pounding the, the Fed, there's no way they would actually hike rates ahead of the election because in the past, George Bush Sr., uh, the Fed hiked rates, and many say that derailed his chances of being reelected. Well, it wasn't just, it was four hikes in a four month period of time going into the election. And so he obviously lost the election, even though the economy was already recovering. And so uh, I think the president is, wants to win. Uh, and so he's playing his cards uh, terrifically, frankly. Um, but, you know, we can debate about whether or not there should be a rate cut or not. But it, it, the market's predicting it, and it's sort of baked into yeah, the market. Yeah, that's the market so, side. But I'm yeah. talking vis-a-vis -vis election being reelected no, or as, derailing. As, as it relates to game theory, the president is handling it brilliantly. He's raising a ton of money. Uh, he's got the narrative set up for an economic miracle that's taking place in the United States. He's going to, in my prediction, tie up the trade situation with China and resolve that, you know, likely in the next two or three months. And so that narrative, that wave will be unbelievably positive for him. He will have right-sized 40 years of trade imbalances. He's got the economy growing at around 25 to 3.5%, depending on the quarter print. And as you know, and we were just discussing, the jobs are legendary. You have more jobs available than people right. that are looking for those jobs. And if someone loses a job, bam, they quickly find one. So all point, that stuff is amazing. To your point, just a couple hours ago, the New York Fed released their monthly consumer survey. And it's just set a record. <clears throat> a record amount of Americans said that they're confident they can find a new job if they lost one tomorrow. Again, that's amazing. To me, that's better than any poll you could ever take. And, and, and again, you know, he probably has a little bit of the reverse Bradley effect. Remember Mayor Tom Bradley? People said they were voting for him, and then they didn't. Right. Uh, that 44 is probably closer to 51. There's probably a group of people in there that say they're not liking him when they actually do. And that's sort of the one, one of the weird things about the president. Well, you know, we, we, when, when, people, when pollsters come up to us or when there's a social pressure to, to act one way or be one way. But let me ask you Have real you quick. Has a pollster come up to you? I gotta, I've never had <laughs> one pollster come up to me. They must, they must already know what I'm doing. I think it's something about the way you and I walk around, you know, that New York <laughs> chip on our shoulder. But let me ask you, because i got less than a minute to go, but I do want to ask then the Democrats, because some of them are running on, you know, giving out as much free stuff as possible. How alluring is that, though, to the Americans who aren't necessarily enjoying this tide, this economic tide right now? 
Well, I mean, that's one of the studies that's come out. The, the, the people below $100,000 haven't been dramatically impacted yet by the tax cut. And so that, that is a risk. But I don't see that as a long-term risk because, by and large, the country is an aspirational society, and people are voting on the future for their children. And so the economic growth, I think, is enough to cinch it for the president. But further left they go, Charles, my opinion, the country is not ready for that. It's not a socialist country. We're a group of risk-takers in the country. And, and so that will play very, very well to the president. I mean, you even got people on other media, left, left-leaning left media sites saying, Elizabeth Warren, uh, she'll lose by 47 states, that sort of thing. Wow. Anthony Scaramucci, great hey, to see you, hey, man. Hey, it's great to be here. All right.